Welcome back to the Oxford Division Model Railroad. I'm Keith, your track foreman. This is research video number four in the series. Choosing to use scenic anchors on your layout. In this video, I'm going to showcase a feature that will add tremendous interest and impact to any layout, small or large, especially clubs. I'm talking about a scenic anchor for your layout. This feature, this element, is in more places around the world than you first think. This element can be operated on its own as a feature or just used as a scenic anchor for the rest of the layout. It's a scenic element that establishes location, importance, and will startle first-time visitors to your layout, whether at home or on a club. So what am I talking about? Well, let's go to St. Louis for an example. And we're going right now. We jump into Google Earth Pro and zoom into the St. Louis waterfront on the Mississippi. People that watch my videos know that I'm an urban industrial modeler and industry can be scenery to me and this find is utterly fantastic. This one still gets me every time I go to it. Massive steel trestle work going over warehouses and businesses to get to where it's going. This is the remains, very little remains, of a switching district right close to a major yard to the south. That's the direction we're looking at right now. The concrete and steel trestle on the left is going down. The massive high steel trestle on the right is also going down. They are both going down to a flat, large yard. That would work on a club or you could model just this area on a switching district, a small switching layout. How cool would that be to see this on a switching layout and impress your friends? This impresses me every time I come here on Google. As we swivel around, I slowed some of this down because I tend to maneuver quite fast with the mouse. I slowed some of it down to make it a little bit easier, but I'm going to go back and forth a couple of times to let everybody see this and let it sink in. I don't want to go too fast so people don't realize the magnitude of what we're looking at. Whether it's Street View or Google Earth Pro, you can swivel around, swivel up and look at stuff underneath as we're doing right now and realize just how massively built this is. This is just utterly amazing. I'm going to be modeling this on the layout here in the basement. Believe it or not, something quite similar to this. The Ordox and Duluth are going to be on this layout. It's all going to be part of the scenery. It's going to be a scenic anchor, not operated, but it's going to show the location and importance of what was there, just like this is. There are steel trestles like this all over major cities in the United States and Canada for sure, all over the eastern seaboard. There's bridge approaches. It tells people exactly where we're at and how important it was. Swivel around and look at the different aspects of how the trestle was built, how many girders are across, how it was laced together with cross braces. Pause, do screenshots and print it out on your printer at home and you've got pictures of examples on how to build it. You can kit bash from various kits using steel girders, whatever approach you want to do to make these things, 
but you're going to be able to make a much more detailed and interesting model that way. And look at how these warehouses zoom up in the sky. Don't make the layout real low where you're looking at rooftops. Let these buildings zoom up higher, loom above the visitor. It's going to be a more impressive and the street tracks will be that much more accessible for your switching between you and your conductor on your switch crew. Whether it's a layout on a club or it's only on your switching layout at home, it's going to be more accessible. Let those buildings loom high. Surprise your visitors when they come to see your layout. Swivel around left and right as I'm doing here to show the architecture of these buildings. You notice as they go along in sections, they aren't all the same. And it's a completely different architecture across this. They've got some glass block construction and different pieces blanked out. They might have done that in later years. But as we go down the street, you're going to see all the different architecture. Use this capability to your advantage when you're deciding what the model what to include, what not to include. People will think you're a genius when you put this together. Even if it's not exactly what was there, they're gonna go, how in the world did you come up with this? If you're only emulating and not exactly modeling it, they're still gonna be impressed. Look at the trains way up high above the street. Those are high cube boxcars in Union Pacific colors. Part of this above there is blank girders. That's the highway being disassembled as we speak. This used to be a U.S. highway going across the Mississippi and it shared the railroad. The railroad still uses it, but not the highway. I might do a separate video just on that highway bridge being disassembled as we speak in the past decade. But swivel around and look at these massive trestles and look at the buildings. We just went around this is the backside of that street we were just on. How many stories we're looking at? Is that seven? It's just a massive structure. If this was just a small switching layout, this would be incredibly impressive. I don't care who you are, this impresses me. This concrete steel trestle goes up ahead and the tracks over there go underneath, disappear in a tunnel under the gateway arch. That's exactly on our backs right now is the gateway arch. We're not very far from it. Every so often you're gonna see it. But look at here, this is the highway. This is the highway railroad bridge going across the Mississippi and we're looking at that massive curved girder. Now when I say that, that means sections of straight arranged in curves and angles. That's how the railroad does it. You're gonna look just that much more smart if you use straight sections to make your curved uh, trestle. No matter how sharp and curved your trestle would be, make it short sections of straight. But we're looking right through one trestle to look at the trestle we first started with. And you realize that on the prototype, that's quite a sharp bend. On HO uh, model railroad sizes, that's quite a generous curve. And you would have to decide for yourself how much room you've got to make a curve, but it would look impressive regardless of the curve radius. we look the other direction this is the track in the dirt it's not used anymore it goes right up to that warehouse goes right back and goes to where we were at before now if we walk up this narrow street here you notice that it probably never had railroad it was probably truck transfer for transloading but the concrete and steel trestle goes around and forms a Y and goes around the building here. Here you can see the transload uh, doors that were for the trucks going up and down this street. 
look at the types of architecture. Use this capability of Google Earth to your advantage to swivel around and look at the architecture. Like I said, take screen graphs and you can have a better idea of what to model and how to model it, even if you choose a different style. get to notice all the power lines and the power poles and the high lines going along here to provide power. Don't forget the fire escapes. They're all over the place. Like this view. Fire escape right away at the beginning and then there on the next block is another fire escape. We go around the corner and we see the connecting aisleway between buildings. And look at that. It's five stories tall just for the elevated aisle space connecting between one building and the other and all of the uh, windows and garage doors along here. Now the building on the left had a serious fire. It got gutted uh, in the past decade. It no longer has a roof and yet the bricks look in good shape. But you'll notice all of the buildings, all the glass in the building got knocked out. But this shell of a building is still there. This uh, manufacturing company, Grundon Martin Manufacturing, has their own Wikipedia website uh, page. And they talk about the fact that they were once the world's largest manufacturer of paper kites. And their competitors were also located in St. Louis. I guess St. Louis was the capital for making paper kites. This company had hundreds and hundreds of employees working around the clock to keep up with demand for paper kites. And they lasted into the 50s, I believe it was. Several other companies then uh, tried to buy the manufacturing building. Uh, they had varying success and then lost. Now everything is empty. Uh, if you were to check again in another decade, these buildings might be gone. You might be looking at history in the making. There you can see the Gateway Arch out ahead. Shows you just how close to downtown we are with the interstate going right past the St. Louis Union Station or what used to be the Union Station. We've actually ridden our motorcycles there and parked and went inside and had coffee. It's now a downtown shopping area. But look at all the detail here. There's a, a, a ramp there for freight and all the buildings and all of the fire escapes, all of the window treatments and the power lines along here. Tons of detail that you could be working on that model on your layout for some time to come. I believe this is seven stories tall. The very top two on the left there, those are probably elevators uh, the, with the machinery at the top and they're running between floors back and forth. These old warehouses are just absolutely magnificent and a lot of detail uh, on them. And when we get down to the end, you're going back to the area we're at. Here is the steel and concrete Y curving around. And you can again see fire escapes and uh, venting, possibly for boiler heat, possibly for steam machinery. Let's switch to Google Street View and take advantage of any for anybody that just has Google without Earth Pro installed. We start in the same area we're at. And we're going to swivel around again to let people see this relationship between the street and these massive steel trestles above. On the left is a modern day business. I'm not sure of the name, but we zoom in to look at the trestle as it curves around. 
and then we're going to zoom back out and take advantage like we did in other videos see more dates So now we click on see more dates in the upper right hand corner and the thumbs will show up in the bottom. This aspect of Google only showed up this year. We have a selection of years. So we click on a couple and go backwards in time. We go a few years back and it changes slightly. And then you notice Hey, that looks like a track over there. Let's zoom in and take a look. Sure enough, there's a track there. So we go back to the last one. It's 2009 Bingo. There's track in the street. There's a tank car sitting over there. And we swivel to the right, and that track is curving. It's going right down the street. And then you look there, and there's tracks in the street yet and it goes under this steel trestle bridge work. How cool would that be, whether on a switching layout or a club, to be switching cars and running underneath that steel trestle work or curving down that street where your conductor is on the other end and you're on this end of the small layout and you're pulling and pushing cars down in there at the command of your conductor giving you instructions. That would be just an awesome thing to be doing. This is marvelous for a switching layout or in addition to a large club. Very easily done. Both the steel and concrete trestle and the large steel trestle taper down in that end the way we're looking. There's a major yard down there. If we zoom in, you can see a Union Pacific locomotive down there pulling out this way. And as we swivel out and go this way, you're going to Look ahead, we're now facing straight east, the steel trestles out there, that's the Mississippi River and the bridge across it. There used to be buildings in this area as well. This was all switching district at one time with the busy waterfront. Today it's mostly empty. To have this on a small segment of a club layout or on your own home shelf switching layout would be utterly fantastic. This would just blow away your friends when they see it for the first time. Now if we swivel out to the next area to the north, you can see that curving area past that warehouse we were looking at. This is a Y and it goes out to the west. We're looking towards the downtown where the St. Louis Union Station was at. Click more data. They don't have as many thumbs, but look what happens when we do. Boom. There's more businesses there where there weren't any. More brick and mortar businesses as we go up this street and swivel around. That's the advantage of these thumbs. We're only going back a little ways in time, but we can see massive differences in town. And if we click to the present time, boom, it's gone. Empty field. And then go back to it, boom, there it is. It's incredible. You're seeing history in the making. Am I the only one that wishes we had this back into steam days? If we'd had Google and satellite back then and seeing all of what was going on with tons of traffic, uh, rail, rail trackage everywhere in the country back then. Oh my gosh, I sure wish I could. There you can see a train on the other leg of the Y swinging around, going underneath the present day interstate. But as we swivel around, you can see the old buildings and then the empty storefront. You can switch and compare.
Now I also searched for aerial photos. I found some that are free from a source in Missouri and they don't go back that many decades but they're enough to show the difference in the waterfront and showing the tops of all this neighborhood that I'm looking at. So I've included some screen grabs of that. Here's our aerial photos. There's our trestle over the warehouses. And I got it here. St. Louis County GIS Service Center. These images are free, copyright free to use for anything you want. There's our warehouse buildings that we were looking at and the Y with the warehouses in between the Y.